Can bone marrow stem cells be used to treat liver cirrhosis? This is a question that's being asked in a recent publication by Tere et al, which describes actual clinical trial of bone marrow stem cells for treating this condition. Now the background is that patients who have advanced liver cirrhosis um, leading to decompensated liver failure, the only option for these patients is liver transplantation and as the viewer knows there, is not, there are not enough liver donors for the number of recipients. So one of the exciting possibilities is if stem cells can actually be used to regenerate the damaged liver so that you don't need a liver transplant. And data supporting this idea comes from animal experiments in which a uh, hepatotoxin, a liver toxin, a carbon tetrachloride, is administered to animals, which causes liver damage and um, death. And these animals, if one administers bone marrow stem cells, survival is prolonged. In some cases, the animals are completely cured. And there is microscopic evidence of liver regeneration. Other evidence from humans that stem cells may help the liver to regenerate is from patients who have a liver transplant. Uh, for example, if a male patient receives a female liver, in the female liver there should be no Y chromosomes. However, when biopsies are taken from, from male patients who have female livers, one does find bone marrow derived Y chromosome cells in the female liver, implying that the bone marrow stem cells can differentiate into liver stem cells in the human. Now, one way to make stem cells go into the liver of people with liver failure would be to administer mobilizers of stem cells, such as GCSF. However, the authors of the current study were worried that GCSF may actually complicate and cause adverse effects and patients who have cirrhosis. So what the study did was they used autologous bone marrow stem cells. So the question addressed by the study is can autologous bone marrow uh, infusions, autologous bone marrow stem cells administered systemically, can they benefit the patients with decompensated liver failure? And basically what was performed was an intravenous inf infusion of 5 billion mononuclear bone marrow cells, bone marrow cells extracted from the iliac crest of patients with cirrhosis. Nine patients were treated and what you can see in this diagram here is basically the procedure. Uh, patients were placed under general anesthesia. 400 milliliters of bone marrow was extracted from the iliac crest from the hip and the cells were washed and then they were assessed to make sure the cells were alive and then they were infused intravenously. Liver biopsy was taken before the bone marrow therapy and four weeks after. The endpoints were safety and liver function at four weeks and at 24 weeks. And also the, the, there was imaging studies done to look at ascites, which is one of the, one, one of the complications of the liver failure. And in this figure, serum albumin levels were measured, and as you can see, each of the lines represents a patient. So there was nine patients, and this is concentration of serum albumin on the y-axis, and on the x-axis is time. So here is eight weeks before, four weeks before, one day before, and as you can see, there's no changes, and then four weeks after and 24 weeks after. And as you can see, there's a statistically significant increase in serum albumin in all of the patients who were treated. I mean in the average of all of the patients who were treated. Some patients obviously responded better, better, better than others. Now here again the same time points except we're looking at the total protein in the plasma and again we see a statistically significant increase uh, at four weeks and at 24 weeks compared to before, before the administration of autologous bone marrow. And now we're looking at a clinical score called the Child Pew Score. And the more advanced the Child Pew Score is, the more advanced the liver failure is. And again, we can see eight weeks, four weeks, and one day before 
is a relatively standard a no change in the average child Pew score and then four weeks after there's a decrease and an even greater decrease 24 weeks after. So what this data is saying that the administration of autologous bone marrow cells does actually impact uh, several biomarkers, albumin and protein, and also the clinical score of the patients treated. Now, as we mentioned before, ascites is one of the big problems in in liver failure. And on the top two panels, panel A and C is ultrasound, and where you can see the red arrows uh, before and two weeks after, you can see a decrease in the in the dark area. That is the decrease in the ascites in the liver. And below you can see you can see the um, the CT scan uh, before autologous bone marrow stem cells and two weeks after. And again, you can see a decrease in the dark area where the arrows are pointing. That is a decrease in the ascites, and this is representative of several of the patients. Now, looking at a microscopic level, this is biopsies before and four weeks after, and you can't really see it, but the red in the biopsy in the top panel before and after is immunohistochemical staining for alpha feta protein. This is an uh, indicator of liver function. And when you look at the graph, at the, quanta, at, the gra at the figure underneath, you can see a statistically significant increase in the number of labeled cells having alpha feta protein. And the other marker that was looked at in biopsy is proliferating cell nuclear antigen, PCNA. This is an indication of cell multiplication. And as you can see, both in the immunohistochemistry and also in the, in the graph, there is a statistically significant increase in the number of proliferating cells in the patient's biopsy of the patient liver after the bone marrow stem cell therapy. So in conclusion, um, this is discussed more in the paper, obviously, but bone marrow stem cell therapy uh, appears to be safe, at least in the nine patients that were treated. There was no uh, severe adverse events. Uh, there was a statistically significant increase in albumin and protein, and a decrease statistically significant in the child Pew score, indicating an improvement in the patient prognosis. And there was also microscopic evidence of regeneration of the liver, or proliferation, I should say, of cells in the liver as detected by the proliferating cell nuclear antigen. Now, with this data, what are the next steps? The next steps is, this was a small study, only nine patients were treated, so obviously larger sample numbers uh, should be performed. The other important thing is to consider using different types of stem cells. It is known that the older a patient gets, the stem cell activity becomes reduced, so one would consider using stem cells um, such as cord blood stem cells, which have more regenerative capacity in this context, and this has not been performed to date. Uh, from a scientific point of view, one should start to investigate are the stem cells being infused, are they regenerating, are they differentiating themselves into liver, or are they activating the endogenous liver stem cells? And this is something in other models where there's a lot of investigation in other diseases. If it's the stem cells you're injecting that are actually becoming the tissue, or is it that the stem cells you're injecting produce factors that help the stem cells that are already in the tissue to reawaken? And the last point for next steps is the possibility of using other agents. As we saw, there's a statistically significant increase in several clinical parameters. However, this increase conceptually could be further augmented by using agents that will stimulate stem cells and stimulate mobilization of stem cells to interact with administered stem cells. Thank you very much.